This is called Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Notre Dame. There is more treasure in books than all the pirates loot and the treasure island at the bottom of the Spanish main. And best of all, you can enjoy these riches every day of your life. Well, Disney. Well, this is cool. Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. One morning, as the bells of the great, great cathedral of Notre Dame echoed over the rooftops of Paris, a gypsy performer named Cloppin entertained the crowd of eager children gathered before his puppet theater. Listen, said Cloppin. They are beautiful, no? But you know the bells do not ring themselves. They don't, asked the puppet, who wore on his hand. No, answered Cloppin, pointing to the bell tower. Hush, and I'll tell you the tale, a tale of a man and a monster. Hmm. The children listened as he told the story of a gypsy family who nearly 20 years before had slipped into Paris only to be met at the dock by the evil judge Claude Frollo and his brutal, brutal soldiers. Frollo despised gypsies for he had they represented all that was bad in the world. Hmm. As the family was taken prisoner, Frollo noticed the gypsy woman clutching, clutching a bundle. He commanded the soldier seize what she, what he thought was stolen goods. The terrified woman ran across the square and then up to the steps of the magnificent cathedral of Notre Dame. Desperately, she pounded on the doors, crying, "Sanctuary!" Please give me sanctuary. Frollo thundered up behind the woman on his horse and grabbed the bundle. They struggled and she fell upon the stone steps and struck her head. As Frollo looked upon the dead woman, the parcel in his arms began to cry. It's a baby, muttered Frollo as he unwrapped the blanket and looked inside. No, it's a monster, he gasped when he saw the poor mishappened infant within. Hmm. Frollo was about to drop the baby into the dark opening of a well when a voice from the archdeacon pierced the night to stop him under the watchful eyes of Notre Dame. Claude Frollo suddenly feared for the freight fate of his soul. When he asked the archdeacon what he should do, the priest told him to adopt the infant and raise him as his own. Frollo agreed but only if the child could live in the bell tower of Notre Dame. Ah, okay. Then Klopp imposed a riddle to his spellbound audience. Now, can you guess who the monster and who is the man? Hmm, you're not sure. High above the bell tower of the cathedral, there lived a gentle young man who didn't know of Kloppen or the tale he told, nor did the young man know anything of the world that existed below other than what he observed from his home in the tower. His name was Quasimodo, and he had spent every day of twenty years in Notre Dame, where he was asked to ring the bell, the magnificent bells. That was his job. Although Quasimodo lived alone, he had three constant and faithful companions, Hugo, Victor, Victor, and Laverne. To everyone else, these creatures were mere stone gargoyles. But the sweet-tempered Quasimodo, they were living, talking friends. And today, the f trio was looking forward to their annual ritual of watching the Festival of Fools with, a human, with their human companion. But Quasimodo just went inside and gazed sadly at the perfect miniature of the city he had built in his room. Oh, how cute is that? Laverne followed Quasimodo and asked, Did you ever think of going to the festival? That's all I ever think about, he told her, but I never fit out there. My master Frollo has told me I'm not um, normal. But the gargoyles had said he had, had insisted that they, he went and attended the festival until finally Quasimodo agreed to go. Just as Quasimodo reached the doorway, Frollo appeared as they went over as they went over Quasimodo's daily lessons, he revealed that he had been thinking about going to the festival. Frollo convinced Quasimodo that he could oh, he could protect the young man from a certain cruelty of the townspeople only if he stayed in the cathedral. Down in the square, the beautiful gypsy Esmeralda played the tambourine 
while her mischievous goat Daja danced in the music to the music. Passers by dropped coins in her hat, and the crowd was full of handsome Phobus Frollo's new captain of guard, who had just arrived to the city. His eyes met Esmerella, and for a moment they held each other's glance, but another gypsy signaled that there was trouble near. Daja quickly grabbed the hat in his teeth, spilling the coins onto the ground. As Esmeralda rushed to gather the money, two soldiers approached. Certain she had stolen the coins, the soldiers grabbed Esmeralda and snatched away the hat. She struggled to be free with a little help from Daja, who buttoned one of the soldiers, who butted one of the soldiers in his stomach. She finally escaped. Phoebus commanded his horse, Achilles, to sit sit on the soldier, giving Esmeralda and Daja time to disappear down the alley. Well, that's just funny. A short while later, Phoebus reported to Claude Frollo at the Palace of Justice. I expect nothing but the best from the war here in your caliber, said Frollo. But as they made their way down the dark corridor, Phoebus heard the sound of something being whipped. Continuing their talk along the outer walkways, she began Phoebus began to wonder about Judge Frollo's idea of justice. Look, Captain, gypsies, said Frollo gravely, pointing down to the eager crowd around the dancing Esmeralda. I believe that they have a safe haven within the walls of the very city. They call it the Court of Miracles. And what are we going to do about it, sir? In answer, Frollo took a stone and crushed a nest of ants he had found hidden under the railing. Well, he's not very nice. Meanwhile, Quasimodo's friends, the gargoyles, had finally convinced him to go along with his plan and attend the festival. Disguised as a hooded in a hooded robe, he climbed down the side of the cathedral. The tipsy turvy day parade was in full swing, and everybody, everywhere, people were dressed in funny costumes. Musicians played, peasants danced. Although he tried to remain out of sight, Quasimodo could not avoid being swept up in the action. There he is. He's having fun. As he searched for a place to hide, the anxious young man lost his balance and fell into Esmeralda's dressing room. You're not hurt, are you? The lovely gypsy asked. She pushed his hood aside while Quasimodo cowered, waiting for the shriek he was certain to follow. But Esmeralda just complimented him. That's a great mask, she said. Quasimodo roamed the square, thrilled by the festivities. Soon it was time for Esmeralda to per per perform. She danced her way all, all over to Frollo on the reviewing stand. The judge could not take his eyes off the gypsy girl. Neither could Phoebus or Quasimodo. Esmeralda even winked at Quasimodo as she passed by, making him blush. When she finished dancing, Cloppin reappeared on stage to announce the crowning of the king of fools. The people in the grotesque mask scrambled to the platform. Esmeralda saw Quasimodo and pulled him up on the stage. Esmeralda went down the line of contenders for the king of fools, removing each one's disguise. But when she reached Quasimodo, she realized he wasn't wearing a mask at all. The crowd gasped. We wanted the ugliest face in Paris, and here he is. Quasimodo paraded through the streets as the ugliest king of fools ever, but soon the crowd got out of hand and began to throw fruit and taunt him. Frollo did nothing. Even when the frightened Quasimodo was tied to a pillar, he pleaded for help. Esmerella came to Quasimodo's rescue, enraging Foro, who ordered the gypsy girl arrested. In a mad date, in a mad chase, she dodged his soldiers, and soon she and Daja slipped into the cathedral. Phoebus followed, but instead of arresting her, he told Frollo that Esmeralda had claimed sanctuary, and Arch the archdeacon came to her side, assuring that no harm would come to her while she was in the cathedral. Upon his return, Quasimodo watched Esmeralda as she explored the cathedral. When he ran off to his room, she followed, wanting to apologize for what happened at the festival. Up in the bell tower, Esmeralda complimented Quasimodo on his miniature model of Paris he carved. Talking to this kind of person, Quasimodo began to think, 
What about Frollo said what about gypsies being bad might be untrue. And when she told him, he was not the monster, his master said. Quasimodo desperately, she, he really wanted to believe her. Quasimodo offered Esmeralda a surprising way to escape from the cathedral undetected. Picking up the gypsy and Daja, he skillfully leapt off the bell tower, quickly, quickly climbing down the face of the cathedral. And when they reached the bottom, Esmeralda kissed Quasimodo and gave him a woven necklace. It will help you find the court of miracles, she said. And she fled. But when Quasimodo reached the bell tower again, he met Phoebus, who was searching for Esmeralda. He asked him tell me to tell the gypsy he meant her no harm, but Phoebus left, and the gargoyles revealed that they thought Esmeralda was in love with Quasimodo. Although Quasimodo told them they were wrong, he secretly hoped that that might be true. When Frollo learned that Esmeralda had escaped from Notre Dame, he ordered the soldiers to search every building in Paris, maddened by the, his unsuccessful search. He even set fire to the home of the miller, certain that the family had sheltered gypsies. At that moment, Phoebus realized how truly evil Fro Frollo was. The brave captain entered the burning mill to rescue the family. He immediately sentenced him to death. As Phoebus was about to be executed, Esmerella frightened Frollo's horse, and Phoebus escaped. As he fled, Phoebus was wounded by an arrow and fell into the river. Though Frollo left him for dead, Esmeralda rescued him and brought him to Notre Dame. At first, Quasimodo thought that Esmeralda's visit meant she indeed had tender feelings for him, but then he realized that she had only come as a friend wanting to hide Phoebus. When she overheard her speaking to Phoebus, it became clear how much Esmeralda cared about the captive, and Quasimodo's heart was broken. As Frollo Frollo's carriage unexpectedly pulled up outside as Marilla turned to Quasimodo and said, Promise me you won't let anything happen to him. Frollo went to Quasimodo's room and sat at the table that hid Phoebus. He noticed Quasimodo was acting a little strangely and became suspicious. Soon he spotted a little carved figure of Esmeralda and Quasimodo. He had added it to his toy village. She will not torment you any longer, said the judge, setting the doll on fire and turning to leave. I know where her hideout is, and tomorrow at dawn I tack with a thousand men. Well, that's no nice. As soon as Frollo left, Phoebus asked Quasimodo to help him find Esmeralda. But Quasimodo, hurt and confused, was afraid of, was afraid of disobeying Frollo again, refused to go with him. Sadly, Phoebus went off on his own, and finally... Thinking of his friendship with Esmeralda, Quasimodo decided to help Phoebus find the gypsy and save her from his man. With Flolo watching, Quasimodo caught up with Phoebus and showed him the amulet. Quasimodo explained, it, that was a map of Paris, and they followed her to the cemetery. There, Quasimodo found a hidden staircase beneath the graves, and the two decided to go into the darkened tunnels. Quietly, the skeletons lying about them who were really gypsies in disguise, arose and began to follow. Wow. Suddenly, they were plunged into blackness, and when the lights returned, the two were surrounded. Well, 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 what do we have here, said Cloppin as he stepped out of the crowd. Phoebus and Quasimodo were escorted to the scaffold in the center of this amazing place, where the two nooses awaiting. Cloppin had them gagged and held the make-believe puppet trial, in which they were quickly found guilty. Wow, well, that isn't any fun. As Quasimodo Phoebus were about to be hanged, Esmeralda burst into the crowd and mounted the platform. Stop, she shouted. These men are our friends. This is a soldier who has saved the miller's family, and Quasimodo helped me escape from the cathedral. Yeah. After Esmeralda removed their gags, Phoebus turned to the crowd and announced, we came to warn you, warn you, Frollo's coming. You you took terrible risk coming here, as Esmeralda told Phoebus. It may not be exactly how I show, but we are grateful. Don't thank me. Thank Quasimodo. Without his help, I would have never found my way here. That's right. I don't need to run. Nor would I, cried Frollo, who had arrived triumphantly with his army of soldiers. He strode 
up to where Phoebus, Esmeralda, and Quasimodo stood as frightened gypsy families tried to escape. He let me right to you, my dear, sneering at Esmeralda. He never lets his master down. Then you must have tricked him, accused Esmeralda. Quasimodo was horrified. His friends were captured, and it was all because of him. The soldiers led Esmeralda and Phoebus away in chains, and Flo ordered his charge to be chained to the bell tower. By nightfall, the platform had been built in the square, and Flo appeared. As the two guards tied Esmeralda to the stake, he announced, The prisoner has been found guilty of crime or rich craft and sentenced to death. Nearby, Phoebus was imprisoned in a cage surrounded by guards. He watched. She couldn't help it all. In the bell tower, Quasimodo knelt, motious, knelt motionless and defeated with the gargoyles, urged him to save his friends. Then Frollo's voice boomed from the low. She stands before you exposed for the monster that she is, he proclaimed. No, Quasimodo shouted and began to tug on the chains. He pulled with all his might, and soon the pillars that held crumbled, and he was free. Quickly, he swung down the wall of the cathedral, landed on the platform in the square, and rescued Esmeralda. As soldiers rushed him, he held them off with a beam, and then he carried Esmeralda back up to the face of Notre Dame as the crowd watched in amazement. Unharmed, he hoisted himself into the balcony and raised the unconscious Esmeralda above his head. Sanctuary, he called. Sanctuary. Seize the cathedral, screamed Frollo, even though it had no, authority, had no authority over the church. Inside the bell tower, Quasimodo placed Esmeralda on a bed of straw. He walked out to the balcony and saw all the soldiers surrounding the cathedral. He heaved wooden, heaved wood and pieces of masonry, masonry over the side, sending soldiers fleeing in all directions. Then he picked up the beam and hurled it over the side. It crushed his carriage. Good. Meanwhile, Phoebus had seized the guard's keys and freed himself and Choplin from the carts where they had been imprisoned. Citizens in Paris, Phoebus shouted, Frollo has persecuted our people, ransacked our city, and now he's declared war on Notre Dame herself. Will we allow it? No, shouted the angry crowd as Choplin and Phoebus led them toward the cathedral. Inside Notre Dame, culture Quasimodo and his gargoyle friends were holding off Frollo's troops, all that they could. Quasimodo was tiring. He seemed the soldiers would never stop, never stop coming. He heard the doors of the cathedral giving way. It's hopeless, he muttered, resting for a moment. moment. Then he had an idea. Hugo Victor fanned the flames under the huge vat and led Quasimodo, kept the bell tower. Quasimodo used all his strength to tip it over, and the glowing liquid flowed over the side of the wall and down the front of the cathedral doors. Like a red-hot curtain, the soldiers dropped their battering ram and scattered, leaving, leaving Frollo all by himself. Well, Frollo dodged a shower of lead and pierced the cathedral door open with a sword. Looking from the bell tower, Quasimodo rejoiced. We've beaten them! We've beaten them back, he cried. Esmeralda woke up, and she's safe. But she continued to be motionless. Frollo stood in the doorway of the bell tower room, watching Quasimodo weep over his Esmeralda's limp body. As Quasimodo knelt, Frollo dra raised a dagger above the young man's head, but Quasimodo and saw his shadow on the wall just in time and knocked him to the floor. All my life that you told me that that the world is dark and a cruel place, says Quasimodo as he towered over Frollo, but now I can see the only dark and cruel thing is you. That's right. Just then a voice called out softly, Quasimodo, it was Esmeralda. He ran over to her side and picked her up. His sword drawn, pursed them out of the balcony. Frollo slashed at Quasimodo as he tried to hold onto Esmeralda with one arm. He swung around the edge of the balcony, but Frollo continued to attack, cutting him in the wrist. Finally, Quasimodo, Quasimodo was able to carry Esmeralda to safety, and then he climbed atop of his gargoyle and faced Frollo. After the struggle, both Quasimodo and Frollo fell from the balcony. Esmeralda grabbed Quasimodo's hand and kept him from falling any farther. Why, Frollo was aim unable at the last moment to climb to another gargoyle. 
Now with Esmeralda a striking distance, Frollo raised his sword. Just then, the gargoyle under him cracked off the cathedral and he went flying to the ground. Esmeralda could hold on to Quasimodo no longer. She lost her grip on his hand and he, too, began to fall. Quickly, Phoebus leaned out the window and caught his noble friend. Aww! In the morning, when morning dawned, all the people in Paris worked to remove the traces of Frollo's rampage, and then the cathedral doors opened. Esmeralda and Phoebus walked to the square hand in hand. A moment later, at Esmeralda's beckoning, Quasimodo emerged into the sunlight. The curious crowd surrounded him, and no one quite knowing what to say or do, and then a little girl walked up to him and gently touched his face. Three cheers for Quasimodo! Nah. The bell tower high above, Hugo, Victor, and Laverne smiled as they watched a happy scene below. Hip, hip, hooray, shouted the jubilant crowd as they carried Quasimodo on his shoulders through the square. Hip, hip, hooray, they cried as they celebrated the hero of their city. The end.